Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yeah. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right from now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We're so glad you're joining with us on the set with Jesus the Healer. And I've got some other studio audience here on the set with me. And so we're glad you've joined us. And uh, we're learning. We're renewing our minds. God began dealing with me about teaching on the mind. And I'm so glad to do that because it's so important that we be skillful regarding our thought lives. Amen. You know, um, people don't realize that of course, God gave you your mind, but not so that it could lead you, so it could serve you. Yeah. And uh, too many times people are serving their minds that's right, that's right. instead of their minds serving the faith that's in their spirit. Yeah. How does your mind serve the faith that's in your spirit? It agrees with it that's right. instead of arguing against yeah. it. Right. And so there's faith in your spirit. That's right. And uh, you can't believe God with your mind, but your mind can be brought into agreement yeah. with God. Amen. And that is the job of the mind is to agree with God right. and yes. not to reason against God, mm -hmm. to, uh, but to agree with Him. And we've been teaching along the lines of the renewed mind because the renewed mind agrees with the faith that's in your spirit. Yes. The renewed mind takes the thoughts of God, the Word of God, and agrees with it instead right. of arguing with it. And so on a previous episode, we were talking about that you are a spirit being. And that's the feature of man that makes you like God is your spirit being. And God is a spirit. So when he speaks to you, he speaks to you through your spirit. He is not going to first speak to your mind unless you're unsaved. Now, let me explain that. Uh, before I was born again, I didn't know anything about salvation. We attended church, but the church we were part of didn't teach salvation. I didn't know you needed to be saved. I loved God and I prayed. And because I wasn't born again and he was not abiding in me, he would speak back, but it would come to my mind. Why? Because he wasn't inside. And there were times that I would sense Jesus in the room and he'd talk to me and I'd hear, I'd hear him. But see, it wasn't coming from within. I wasn't born again. He was not abiding in me. Yeah. Right. And uh, I remember when I was probably about in fifth grade, I've told this story because, I, I, of course, I, I did okay. I did fine in school, but school was not my favorite place to be because I was a loner. So that social setting of being in school was not the most comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. And so when I was about in fifth grade, I remember I was sitting in, in, in class one day at my desk doing work and the teacher had given us some desk work to do. So we were sitting there working and all of a sudden Jesus stood right here to the side. I didn't see him, but I knew he was there. Mm -hmm. And he said one thing to me. He said, teacher. That's all he said. And I, I, I was not, uh, I wasn't taken aback that he was speaking to me. I was taken aback at what he said to me. Right. You know, some might be impressed. Oh, you know. I'm here. I'm, I'm something's talking to me yeah. now. That didn't. That didn't. Uh, that didn't overwhelm me. But my thought was, oh, don't make me a school teacher. Don't make me a school because that's the only teacher I knew about. You know. But what I'm saying is, I heard it from out here. Why? Because he was not in me. But once I got born again, see, now he speaks to my spirit and up from my spirit. He. What happens when? What God has said, your spirit has to enlighten your mind. Yes. Now, don't misunderstand me. He'll speak to your spirit, but then what's in your spirit enlightens your mind. But that comes up from within. When the devil speaks to you, to the Christian, he speaks from out here and it comes against the mind. Right. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Against it. And you can feel it. It's, it's, a, it's a different mm -hmm. approach. Yes. 
But when God speaks to you, he speaks to your spirit and what, it, what your spirit knows yeah. floats up from your spirit and enlightens your mind. Amen. Amen. So your mind is involved in both ways right. because right. your spirit knows things your mind hasn't caught up with yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we take time to fellowship with God. That's why we meditate on the word because then things begin to float up and, and it dawns on us mentally. Yes. But it didn't originate in the mind. Mm -hmm. God speaks to us in our spirits. And not only this, sometimes your spirit, it just knows things. Mm -hmm. And you can't necessarily say that particular words floated up and enlightened. You just knew it from within. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 So you have to learn to distinguish the difference. Anytime the devil is speaking thoughts to trouble you, it comes out here against the mind. Yeah. 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 And it just comes this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anything that originates out here for the believer, mm -hmm. yeah. anything that originates out here, um, God's not doing it unless Jesus is standing in the room talking to you. You know, but even then it will bear witness with right. your spirit. That's right. That's right. Yes. 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 So <clears throat> these are things that we have to understand is where are these things that you're listening to coming from? Yeah. What direction? Is it coming from out here against the mind or is something of your spirit floating up and enlightening your mind? You see? And there's the difference. Because if you don't learn to recognize that this is God or this is the devil, sometimes you'll accept what the devil is saying, thinking God's talking to you. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's why you have to renew your mind because the word will always uh, be in agreement with when God speaks. Amen. If you hear, if you're, if something comes up from your spirit, it'll agree with the word. That's right. Yes. Yes. I mean, when God's speaking to you and it floats up from your spirit, it'll always be in agreement with the word. That's right. But what the devil says will be a distortion of the word, uh -huh. a misapplication of the word. He might even use scriptures, but he'll take them out of context. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's right. yes. They'll be misapplied. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in Jesus, in the wilderness of temptation in Luke chapter 4, the devil used scripture on him, right. but he misapplied it. Yeah. Right, that's right. And he tried to get Jesus to misuse the scripture uh, to get him and to, to deceive him. He tried to use scripture against Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus recognized it. He quoted it and he quoted it right back to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. He said, it is written. And, yes. and then he would answer with the scripture. Yes. And so the renewed mind will more easily recognize a wrong thought or a right thought. It can distinguish. That's right. yes. But when people are not feeding on the word or not renewing their minds, it's, it's not clear for them That's to right. distinguish, is this God or is this the devil? Right. Oh, you see. And then they start accepting a wrong thought. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some thoughts can be obviously wrong. They're obviously troubling. Right. Yeah. But sometimes uh, the devil works in a more subtle way. Yeah. And he just suggests something. Mm -hmm. Some thoughts strike like a fiery dart mm -hmm. in yeah. the mind. Yeah. And I mean, it's apparent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah that it's, a, it's an attack. Right. But other thoughts are just subtle suggestions and you have to be skillful at recognizing all the different strategies and devices that the devil uses. And feeding on the word is part of that. Praying in the spirit is part of that because that makes you sensitive spiritually yes. to discern things. Amen. 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 We were saying on the previous episode, if you listen to the wrong thing mm -hmm. long enough, yeah. Yeah. the wrong thing will start making sense to you. Yes. What you what used to you wouldn't agree with, if you listen to the wrong thing long enough, you'll start agreeing with it. That's, right. yes. Yes. That's, That's right. exactly what happened to Eve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. She kept listening. Mm -hmm. And in the reasonings of her mind, mm -hmm. It start, see, the devil started appealing to her reasonings. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it started making sense to her. Yeah. I don't care if it makes sense to you or not. If it's not God, it's not God. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because God has t instructed me to do things that didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. It made Bible sense. Right. It made faith sense. That's but it right. didn't make natural human reasoning sense. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. And you have to learn and distinguish the difference. Yes. You have to learn to turn toward your spirit mm -hmm. and check down here. Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And when things are coming against your mind, don't stay up there. The devil's seeking to draw you up there and hold you up there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, we see this in Jesus' earthly ministry. We see him handling wrong thoughts mm -hmm. that were suggested to him, not in his mind, right. but suggested to him. Um, the devil would no doubt say something to him. And in, in Luke chapter 4, those 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was in the wilderness. He's being tempted. But also the devil would speak through other people in the sense of uh, people would be motivated by wrong thoughts yeah. and they would say things to him. Remember the time that Jesus was telling his disciples what was going to happen to him in the future and Peter said, oh no, not you Lord. That's not going to happen to you. What did Jesus say? He didn't say, really? You think that's not going to happen? No. He said, get behind me Satan. Yes. He immediately answered wrong thoughts because if you don't answer them immediately, you start listening. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, yes. and the plan of God cannot have you listening to wrong thoughts. That's right. it, was, it was imperative that the plan of God be followed and anything that is against the plan of God for your life, you better not entertain. Right. Yeah. And that's what Jesus said, get behind me. Uh, Brother Copeland says it this way, that literally one way to say it is get out of my face. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In other words, get out of my attention. Yes. That's right. yes. Yes. If you give attention to wrong thoughts, mm -hmm. it will weaken your faith. Amen. That's right. That's right. It'll trouble your faith. That's right. It'll confuse you. Yeah. That's right. It'll confuse you. The devil wants to confuse you up here. Yes. Yes. Because it'll make your, the faith ineffective in your heart because for the faith in your heart to work, it has to have agreement up here. Yes. Amen. 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 A spiritual giant, someone who is spiritually mature mm -hmm. and stalwart and robust, mm -hmm. their mind and their spirits agree. They don't sit and argue That's with each right. other. Yes. The, the, the spiritual man's mind does not sit and argue with his spirit and start contesting right. yes. because the spiritual man has learned to bring his mind into agreement yes. Amen. with the word. Right. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus would turn his back to wrong words Amen. and wrong thinking. What's that a sign of? I'm taking my attention off of what that is. Yes. Yes. That's not getting in my attention. Amen. See, how do you get, how do wrong thoughts gain entrance? You listen to them. Yeah. You open the door to it. You entertain it. You turn it over and over in your thought life. Yes. That's how things gain entrance and begin to take root mm -hmm. in your thought life. Um, the devil will do, one of his strategies is he'll suggest a thought to you. Now see, you have to realize one of, uh, the only power the devil has left because Jesus stripped, he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. But the only thing he has left, the devil has left, is the power of suggestion. It's all talk. He's all talk. Yes. And he can't work any of that talk unless he can get it into you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got to get it into you through your thinking because he doesn't have access to your spirit. He's not in your spirit. Yeah, that's right. No Christian has a, spirit, has, a, has a devil in their spirit. It's not possible no. because the Holy Spirit dwells there and the devil and the Holy Spirit are not abiding in the same yeah, place. That's right. yes. But can a devil attach itself to someone's body? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes some, some people, they may have physical conditions that are really caused by uh, the devil's just attached himself in some way to their body. But that doesn't mean there's a devil in them. That's right. yeah. 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 That's right. In them. Yeah. Yeah. See, because your, your body is the house of your spirit. The body is called, the Bible says the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The reason your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost is because the body is the temple of your own spirit. Yes. yes. Your own spirit is housed in your, within your body. Yes. But it's the, the Holy Spirit dwells in your, in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And so when the body is attacked, that's not the real you. So the devil can attach itself to a Christian's body, but mm -hmm. you have authority. So you take your hands off my body. Right. Yes. That authority still works. Right. Well, can, can a Christian get a devil... Uh, in, entrenched in their mind. I mean, to where he's uh, attached to their mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because a Christian's not a mind. Right. Yes. Amen. They're a spirit. Yes. Amen. But how can the devil get in their mind? By listening. That's right. 
by listening. Amen. When you can say, Pastor Nancy, I recognize I've listened to wrong things too long and it's troubled my mind. Well, you, just as you open the door to the devil, you can close the door. Yes. To the devil. Amen. 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 You can, you open the door, you can get him out. That's right. How do you get it? Pour in the water of the word, pour in the truth of the word. Yes. Think in line with the word, put the, put thoughts of the word in your thought life, put the word in your mouth. Amen. Yeah. And you can change things. Don't think that just because you open the door, it has to stay forever that way. Yeah. You can close the door. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, Pastor Nancy, I need you to cast the devil out. No, no, no. You, you can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Put the word in. You tell the devil take his hands off of you. Now, there, now, in some rare instances, you might have somebody that they need further help with, maybe a minister helping them. But I'm just saying, don't lay everything off on somebody else. You have, a, you have the authority. Amen. You have the authority. Yes. Yes. That you can run thoughts out, answer them. Yes. Amen. Answer them. Yes. Amen. And that's what Jesus did because wrong words were said to him. Right. He wasn't, he wasn't, uh, it wasn't off limits that wrong words be said to him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He stripped himself of his mighty glory and virtue and power yes. when he came here yes. as a, yeah. to, to, to dwell in the, in the flesh of a man, yeah. as a man. Yeah. Yes. He, uh, he was tempted like we were in all points. Not because he was God, but because he put on flesh as a man. Right. Amen. And in that, when those temptations, those thoughts that came to him, just like they come to every human, he knew what to do with them. He answered them. And then he said, get behind me. In other words, I take my attention off of you and what you just said. Yeah. This is where so many yes. people yeah. weaken their faith is they don't get their attention off of what the devil suggested. Yeah. 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 Can I tell you this? Your faith and your attention are connected. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's right, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, it's so, so important. People don't realize you can't have your attention on the wrong thing and yeah. end up with strong faith. Yes. Yes. Good. What you let your attention go to is what your faith will be on. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes. The devil suggests a wrong thought, a troubling thought to you. If you let your attention stay on that, uh, it'll weaken your faith. That's right. You say, how do you, how do you know that, Pastor Nancy? Because I had to learn it. <laughs> I remember the day these things, some of this that I'm talking to you about dawned on me. Mm -hmm. There was just, there was just a season where I knew, you know, there was just an attack on my mind. It, every, every one of us just in the daily course of life, we have to resist wrong thoughts. That's just part mm -hmm. of walking the Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. we hold fast to we hold fast to sound words. We resist we resist wrong thoughts. We resist the devil. But then there can be seasons where it's like a, I mean, the devil's just been assigned to just harass and blow after blow against the mind. Sure. And it was one of those times in in my life. And I kept, my problem was I was trying to get rid of the wrong thought. I knew it was wrong. I knew it wasn't God. And I kept trying to not hear it. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense yeah. to you? Yeah. I kept trying to get yeah. that thing to quit talking to me. Uh -huh. now, this was years ago. Mm -hmm. Baby Christian, I didn't understand some of the things I'm sharing with you. I kept trying to get that thing to quit yeah. talking to me. Mm -hmm. though, well, that's not my job to get the devil to quit talking. Right. My job is to answer when he does talk. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's my job. That's your job. And that's what you're authorized to do. And so um, I was trying to, uh, he had me up in the middle arena. I, I, I'm sad to say I was entrenched in the middle arena. What he was telling me, I kept turning over and over, trying to outthink that thought. And you can't outthink it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Satan's more masterful in the mental arena. That's, right. yes. That's his arena. But our arena is the faith arena, yeah. the spirit arena. Yeah. That's why the devil seeks to draw us out of the spirit arena into the mental arena. Yeah. And I remember I was holding this before God. I was having, Father, I, I need help. I don't know how to handle this that I keep hearing. I know it's not right. I know it's not me. I know it's the enemy. Yeah. But I'm trying not to hear it. Yeah. Well, in the midst of that conversation with God, I got a phone call. And I got a, somebody, one of the staff members had called me and said something had happened with somebody, and that could have been worrisome. Mm -hmm. 
And I go, I said to them, no big deal. I'm not worrying about it. I can't fix that. God will handle it. I'm not worrying about it. And I just took my attention off of it. I just let it, just as soon as I heard it, I let it go. Yes, yes. I answered it. Yes. And I said, I'm not going to worry about that. Yes. I got off the phone and then the Spirit of God said to me, do you see how you handled that? I said, yeah, I know how I handled that. So that I wouldn't let offense get in me is really what it was. It was the opportunity to be offended. Sure. And I said, I'm not even going to think about that because I'm not letting that offense in. Right. Yeah. Offense is mean and ugly, brother. Yes. You don't want to have, you, no, it's, not right. a play, it's not a play partner. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I know how to, I know how to keep that out. Mm -hmm. I took my attention off of what I just heard. And I said, no, I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to touch that in my thought life. And the Spirit of God said to me, that's exactly how you handle what you're hearing the enemy threaten you with. I go, got it. <laughs> got it. I kept trying not to hear it when all I had to do was turn my back to it and get my attention off of it. Amen. Amen. Does that mean I heard it some more? Yeah, I still heard it, but it didn't get my attention. It's huge. Huge. Yes. That's why so many people, bless their hearts, are so troubled, yeah. is because they had their attention on what's troubling them. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, there's one pastor friend of mine, a precious supply in my life, and he was talking about a time he was teaching in a healing class. And he was getting ready to get up and teach, and before he took the pulpit, he had a quick vision. And everybody that was in the room was there that was sick. That's why they were in that healing class. And in that vision that he had, he saw every person sitting there, nearly every person, nearly every person sitting there with their arms wrapped tight around them like this. And when he saw that in that vision, he said, God, what is it that I'm seeing? And he said, they're not receiving healing because they're holding on to their sickness. Now listen to that. They're not receiving healing because they're holding on to sickness. See, you can't hold on to one thing and receive the opposite yeah, thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Amen. And he had a conversation with God about that. He said, what do you mean they're holding on to their sickness? Father, they came to this class because they realize that they want to receive healing. They're not here because they like their sickness. They're not here to hold on to it. They're here to receive healing. So I don't understand what you mean by they're holding on to it. And he said, what their mind is on is what they're holding to. Did you get that? What their mind is on is what they're holding to. And what they're holding to is what they're having. That's right. Huh, what's that mean? Their attention was on their bodies. Their attention was on their symptoms or their pain. And listen, it takes practice that when the body is feeling pain to get your attention off of it and to get it on the word. It's not just about getting your attention off the wrong thing. You've got to get your attention on the right thing. Amen. Amen. You understand that? Yes. The way you get your attention off the wrong thing is get it onto the right thing. Right. Yeah. When you're hearing the enemy accuse you with troubling thoughts, and those thoughts can seem overwhelming, and they can come with great pressure on the mind to get you to accept those. I mean to where they bombard. Yeah. They seem to tighten in on your thought right. life. Right. One of the best ways... Answer what the word says to that thought. For example, if the devil says, you're going to lose your home. My God shall supply yes. all my needs. Amen. See that you answer it with the word. Yeah. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. Now what you're going to do after you answer it? Now what you're going to do? Well, you're going to get your attention off of what the devil just threatened you with. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. well, you want to know one of the best ways to do that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you for your word. Praise the Lord. Praising God is the best way to hold your attention off the wrong thing and on to the word. Amen. 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 You've got to on purpose pick up your mind and put it on the right thing. Amen. I learned this also. 
that when the wrong thing is constantly, repeatedly trying to bombard the mind, the best way I can describe it, have you ever seen an old Western movie and maybe there was some kind of fire that broke out in town and they didn't have any way of communicating with others, uh, with, the, with the townspeople other than they'd have in the church steeple was a bell mm -hmm. and they'd send somebody ring the bell and when people heard that bell, that meant there's an emergency in town and all the people would come running. Have you ever seen a movie like that? And so they'll have a kid or a man that'll ring that bell. What's, how does he ring the bell? He gets on the rope. Yeah. Once... He gets off that rope, the bell keeps ringing. Yeah. 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 But he's still not on the rope. That's right. Why? It's called momentum. That's right. When the devil threatens a wrong thought, mm -hmm. there's a momentum of fear that can come, a momentum of yeah. doubt that yeah. can come. Yeah. With that, there's a momentum that goes with it. Yeah. And once you tell it, you say, devil, I resist you. You leave me in Jesus' name. That thought is not my thought. I won't take it. The moment you resist the devil, he flees. What's that mean? He's off the rope. Yeah. 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 That's good. But even though he got off the rope, sometimes you can still, that the effect yeah. of that thought, yeah. the effect of him having yeah. been there right. seems to have momentum still. Don't worry about the momentum. It'll die down. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Just keep praising God. Keep your attention on the word. Keep your attention on God, worshiping God. Yeah. Yeah. The momentum of the devil having been there will stop. Yes. Yeah. But just because there's momentum doesn't mean he's still there because the devil, the word says, when you resist him, he leaves. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 So Amen. those thoughts will die down. Those feelings of yeah. fear yeah. will subside. Yeah. Don't be occupied with them. Get your attention off of them. Yeah. Yeah. Get your attention off that momentum yeah. Yeah. of that ringing yeah. bell. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And just worship God. Yes. And having your attention on, on the Father, yes. it brings His power into momentum. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, these are some of the things we teach in this book called The Sound Discipline Mind that we've been ministering out of. We want you to get your copy. It'll be a blessing to you. You can contact us at DufresneMinistries.org or call the phone number on the screen. But we want you to remember till next time, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Please join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Fredonia, New York at Family Church Fredonia, August 14th through the 18th. Come expecting your miracle. For more information, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. The timeless truths in this book, Answer It, reveal how to answer every opposition and the steps to take to exit times of testing. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.